Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Justin and today's video is a recap on the 2019 Skate Canada International. I am here live in Kelowna. I attended the competition and it was such a great experience. There was some amazing skates, some disappointments as expected, but overall a lot of great skating. If you can, I recommend attending a competition or a skating event live in person. There is a big difference between viewing the sport on a computer screen via a live stream and being there in the actual arena. A lot of the moves, especially in dance and pairs, appear to be a lot bigger and I found that some skaters appear to be faster in person than how the camera captures them. So I will say a downside to attending a competition is in person is that I am not good at multitasking so I do not keep up on the scores and the results. I don't view the protocols right away. I don't check the current results with past competitions and I'm not as engaged on Twitter. So maybe this recap will be a little more casual than I usually do them, but I hope you all forgive me. Let's go ahead and get started. I think we should talk about ice dance first because that was the first discipline to be concluded. And let's look at the overall results. So the Canadians, Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier, win the competition with a total score of 209.01. They were first in the free dance, but second in the rhythm dance. Congratulations to them. Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue, Skate America gold medalist from last week, win the silver medal here with a total score of 206.31. And then Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson, the fabulous team from Great Britain, win the bronze medal with a total score of 195.35. And then Caitlin Hawaiik and John Luke Baker of the United States round out the top four with a total score of 194.77. Let's start with the champions, Paul and Piper of Canada. This is their first Grand Prix win ever, and what better way to have this happen than in your own home country's Grand Prix event. I am so happy for them. It was kind of close in the rhythm dance. I think they were trailing Madison and Zach by less than a point, but the free dance did it because I believe the free dance score, their tech component was about three points higher than Madison and Zach. So kudos to Piper and Paul. They were not perfect. I haven't heard a lot of people discussing this, but the twist was in the beginning. It looked like there was an error on Piper's part so she received a level three while paul received a level four on that segment of the tech element but otherwise the rest of the free dance was spectacular i believe the music was to both sides now by joni mitchell and that's the perfect vehicle for them this season they came out and they said we are the number one canadian team do not mess with us we have this competition in the bag but no they really fought for it. I like to describe their skating as the perfect balance between light and airy and strength and power. And it's consistent throughout the entire programs without being boring and while engaging the audience the entire time. I'd like to say that they definitely emulate the saying, skating from the tip of your toes to your fingertips because every choreographic movement with an arm stretch, the fingers are pointed, especially by Piper, I notice. And I think the small details like that add into the overall picture of their amazing skating. What else can I say about them? In the free dance, their most rewarded element was the curve lift in combination with the rotational lift in the middle of the free dance, which was done just so well, overall, I'm really happy for them. They need to continue seizing this opportunity. Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poget are not skating in the Grand Prix. And uh, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore have announced their retirement, unfortunately. So this is their time with a gold medal here. They have quite a shot at making the Grand Prix final. Good luck to them. That'd be great for them to qualify. Now let's talk about the Americans, Madison Hubble, Hubble and Zachary Donahue. For my personal taste, I think it was a little too soon to see both of those programs again. They debuted them this season at 2019 Skate America the week before in Las Vegas to mix reactions from the crowd and judges, and I think that was no different here at Skate Canada. There was not the home turf judging or crowd, and I think that played into a factor 
with the judging. The judges are sending them a message that the programs need to be reworked quite a bit. The rhythm dance, my heart belongs to daddy, da 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 daddy. I was in the audience. I don't think that was well appreciated. My biggest takeaway about them is that they are much better than their programs right now. When I see them, my seats are high up, so I have a, a bird's eyes view. They have so much strength and power, such smoothness and really great edge quality. The programs do not do their skating justice. The free dance to The Star is Born, I'm still not over the cuts, not over the voiceovers. There are some parts that work, but it's very choppy. So I'll like some parts, not like some parts, like it. And there are some Canadian ladies behind me talking very loudly about their opinions, and they felt the same way. So I know they did not have any time to rework either of their programs with having two Grand Prix events in the beginning of the circuit, but there is time before they head to the final. Though they have about six weeks, they can make some improvements, maybe edit the music cuts, and then, yeah, we'll see how the programs are received later on, but from at a non-domestic competition, I don't think it did them any favors. But like I said before, they are good skaters. Now, let's talk about the winners of the bronze medal from Great Britain, Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson. I'm just gonna say, they're the team that danced to the Madonna music in the free dance Vogue. Oh, and it was more than just the song Vogue, but it was amazing. They had the crowd engaged so well. My hands hurt from clapping and screaming. I screamed loud for them, for my friends on Twitter. And this was my first time seeing this iconic free dance. I had read about it on Twitter from their Senior B competitions, but didn't watch the video. I, I wanted to wait for Skate Canada to see it live in person, and I'm not sure <laughs> any other experience from them will top what I saw this weekend. They were so good. I love the Ariana Grande ponytail. You know, maybe they don't have the best skating skills as the other two dance pairs, but here's what they do have. They have the performance. They chose the right music. Johnny Weir on NBC always liked to say that the judges are the first row of the audience. The audience was so engaged. I'm I stance dumb. I know nothing about I stance. And I looked at them and said, wow, they enjoy what they're doing. They make I stance look easy, actually. And that's all you can ask for sometimes. I'm really excited for them. A bit of sur a surprise because... A lot of people were expecting Caitlin Hawaii and Jean-Luc Baker to be on the podium because they are great skaters. But I think program choice totally makes a difference in ice dance. It can set the tone. It can highlight the dance elements with the choreography well, if done right. But yeah, okay. So I will say Jean-Luc Baker and Caitlin Hawaii, they were in bronze medal position after the rhythm dance. But it was close. And I do enjoy the rhythm dance a lot better. That was t them totally in their element. Playful. I will say Jean-Luc Baker is an amazing skater. I think everyone else says this, so that's not an original comment from me. So hi, Erin Conley. She's my friend. She loves his team. She's smart with ice dance. I think Jean-Luc gives it a lot more than Caitlyn. I think he's the one carrying the team across. No shade to Caitlyn. She's beautiful. She can stand on her own. I think Jean-Luc is the showman of the team. Their free dance, you know, it was interesting. Hard to get into. The audience was getting into that last bit at the end, but just for a little bit where the music picked up. But I could kind of see where they were going with the vampy, dark, goth, vampire vibe. I'm not sure it translated well just yet. So I want to like it more than I actually do. Uh, but if they want to rise in the ranks, they really have to sell it every time and they need the right programs to assist them in doing so. Uh, I don't know what the rest of the season is going to look like for them, but right now it kind of seems like 
Madison Chocolate Evan Bates of the United States are going to be the American number one dance team. We shall see. But the number one Canadian dance team, Piper Paul, congratulations on your gold medal. <laughs> okay, now time to talk about the ladies. Wow. Let me just say, wow. Let's just review the overall results right now. <laughs> so from Russia, Alexandra Trusova wins the competition with a total score of 241.02. Third after the short program, because she didn't do any quads or triple axles there, but definitely won the free skate and the overall competition. Rika Kahira from Japan wins a silver medal with a total score of 230.33. And then we have surprise podium placer, Young Yu from Korea with a total score of 217.49. And then we have American Brady Tunnell placing fourth with a total score of 211.31. And then Evgenia Medvedeva of Russia with a score of 209.62 in fifth place. Okay, so let's talk about it. Russian skater Alexandra Trusova, four quads attempted in the free skate. And by the way, that free skate was shocking in the beginning because she fell on the opening quad sal cow attempt, which was like, <gasps> wow. But then she continued to rattle them off like no other. It was insane. And being in the audience, it was kind of hard to tell whether they were quads or triples because the rotations are so quick. But it was actually I know a lot of people have opinions about her. It was nice to see her skate so well, especially after falling on that opening quad. So what were her other quads? Quad Lutz, Quad Toe, Quad Toe, Euler, Triple Sal Cal. Ew. It was just so impressive. She's really young though, so now the question is, how does the longevity of her career work? Will she grow and will she keep these jumps? That's something we're gonna wanna keep an eye on. Program component marks, you know, not the highest of the competition. Uh, let's compare it. In the free skate, her component score was 67, whereas in second place, Rika Kihira had a component score of 71, and then 73 for Evgenia Medvedeva. So, you know, put that to perspective, she's young, still. Uh, has some maturing to do within her own skating and still needs to develop her artistry. That being said, I've been seeing some comments online of people saying that her program component marks are still a little too high. I, I might agree with that a little bit. It looks like if she has component scores in the mid eights. Um, transitions look rather high for not having very many and obviously she has to do the setups for some of her more difficult jumps, but we will see how that, comp how that program component score looks over the course of the season and what happens at Russian Nationals. Russian has such a depth in ladies figure skating right now. But as I said in the past, it's kind of a controversial topic because how much should we reward quad jumps at a super young age over mature artistry and maybe not such difficult content? You know, that's something we're gonna have to figure out you know, in the figure skating world over the next few seasons, I think. But for now, quads win competitions and the Russians are winning that game that they're playing. But can we talk about the winner of the silver medal? Because I really like Rika Kihira of Japan. She is one of my favorite um, female skaters right now. Her short program was everything for me. I believe it was a really high score of like 81 oh it was just i like the the up tempo kind of rhythm triple axel looked on the costume was sparkling i just think she's the complete total package i don't want to keep describing her skating because that would just be me being repetitive but high speed great ice coverage nice command paying good attention to the choreography i mean that's it free skate two triple axles. The first one was not done so well. She stayed on her feet though, and then the second one was in combination. Let's see if I can view the protocols for her free skate. Yeah, she did She did everything else well. The main difference is tech content. Let's take a comparison of the technical base value of the free programs to Rika Kihira versus Alexandra Trusova. 
So true Sava's base value total in the free skate is 88.40, while Rika's is 65.97. That is insane. It's going to be really tough to beat Alexandra Trusova in upcoming competitions, but hey, Rika Kihira can stand on her own. Uh, it's unfortunate to think that maybe two triple, triple axles in the free skate won't be enough for her, but she's one of my favorite skaters, and I'm going to enjoy seeing her compete. And in bronze medal position, Young Yu winning the medal over Brady Tunnell. That was just great to see. She is a lovely skater, really was a dark horse here. Now, a lot of people predicted her to be on the podium. She skated so well. And it's unfortunate that this is her only Grand Prix competition, but just overall lovely skater. Let's look at some of the technical elements of her program. So program component scores for Young Yu, you know, she was fourth in the free skate, not bad, 65, you know, so that's slower than Alexandra Trusova, which is interesting, but Young Yu, just a lovely skater. What was her tech content? Oh yeah, she did attempt the triple axe in the beginning of her program. That was not done well. She fell on it, but the rest of her program looked really nice. She went for a triple let's triple toe right after. And I got to say something, kudos to skaters who fall in the beginning of their programs, but still are able to get back up and do all of their jumps really well. That must not be easy to do while being mentally upset and having to finish like three and a half more minutes of your program. So that's just amazing. But yeah, we will young you get assigned another Grand Prix. She would have to be a last minute alternate to replace someone who withdrew. We shall see. Let's also talk about Brady Tunnell. Brady, I had said this last week, her programs looked so good at Skate America. Short program, I love the choreography. I Her skating just has elevated so much for me. It's like there's a lot in her programs without looking like it's too much and she pays attention to every second of detail to the choreographic movements her jumps look good and i think she was scored no i, don't, I think she was actually scored lower here <laughs> probably because it's not a domestic competition so unfortunately she was not able to get on the podium but also we had young you as a surprise dark horse for the bronze medal but i'd say these two programs are a great vehicle for brady tonell this season Maybe she could potentially win the national title title back from Alyssa Liu, the young phenom American who is doing triple axles and quads. But yo, this was a step in the right direction for Brady. I love the performances more in person than viewing the live stream from Skate America. I I actually like the free program music as well. It's a little princessy, but a lot more sophisticated than her previous Cinderella-like Cinderella programs. And her short program is not trying too hard like her dark and edgier short programs in the past. Although that was the right thing for her at the time, these are the two perfect programs for Brady. I'm on board with this new era for Brady Tunnell. Let me check, did she? Oh, so yeah, the reason why she was scored lower than at Skate America was because she had two under rotations in the free skate so the triple toe and the let's toe the second one and then the triple flip otherwise maybe the podium could have been hers program component marks mid eight so 69 total pcs score which is higher than young use and also alexandra trusova's yeah so interesting thing to think about Hi, filming this after the fact. When I started editing, I realized I did not talk about Evgenia Medvedeva. Maybe it's because I wanted to forget about some aspects of her performances here. The short program was absolutely devastating. Oh, I think the mess up on the combination kind of got to her head, and so therefore the double axle was not perfect. And then she had a really bad fall on the triple let's hit the board. It was actually quite scary because it looked like she wasn't sure if she wanted to get back up and continue skating 
the crowd was so worried for her but also supportive at the end she was also extremely tough on herself which was unfortunate hearing from what other people had to say who attended practices all of her practices for the short program were perfect apparently so that skate during the competition was a fluke which is really unfortunate the free program she came back and skated angry which by the way is the way to come back from a bad short program she skated lights out like there was no such thing as a short program she was still a little upset but she was overall third in the free skate segment only able to come up to fifth overall because she was so held back from the short but that free program to memoirs of vacation was something really special from her you know while skating angry there's a different level of attack and a different level of owning every completed jump she did in that free skate so proud of her some hard lessons learned here but hopefully this does her well in future competitions you can't win a gold medal with a really bad short program and then who else can i discuss marin honda looked physically looked great but she had a bandage around her her thigh so that was really unfortunate recovering from an accident i believe and yeah she she doubled a jump in the short program which is unfortunate i, I love both of her programs this season but yeah i hope she does better you all know my favorite skater in this competition though was gabrielle daleman i had my special moment i recorded it in a vlog video that's on my youtube channel so after her short program which was really good for her by the way great progress for her comeback into skating and being healthy again and competitive in the sport i uh, ran down the aisles and was able to hug her and give her flowers she's so awesome so i was that was that was the moment of my week i'm still on a high just thinking about it so ah that was so special the free program unfortunately while such beautiful choreo choreography and music to the celine dion song you know she still has some some things to work on technically but she's headed in the right direction i know her goal is to do really well at nationals and she usually peaks in the second half of the season anyway so nothing to be overly concerned about at least in my regards but kudos to gabby now let's move on to the next discipline okay so for pairs we have russians winning the gold medal alexandra boykova and dmitry kozlovsky with a total score of 216.71 and then canadians kirsten moore towers and michael marinero winning the silver medal with a total score of 208.49 and evgenia tarasova and vladimir morozov surprisingly in bronze medal position with a total score of 202.29 then we have americans alexa skimeka kinerim and chris kinerim rounding out the top four with a total score of 199.57 so I'd have to say that the Russians who won the Paris competition totally owned the event. Short and free skate. They are the young Russians. I like to call them baby Russians because they're so small. But wow, they are so technical. They are just flying across the ice. And what's great is that they look like they truly love skating. They're not just doing it to compete. They're doing it because they love to do it. All of their elements, lifts, jumps, the rows were solid. I mean, that's why they won both the short and free skate segment of this competition. Now, if I were to go into detail, I would just be repeating myself. But yeah, Alexandra and Dimitri, kudos to them. They really did a great job here at Skate Canada. Then we have the Canadians, Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero. This was a success for them in winning the silver medal. Definitely not the way they wanted to do it. The short program had them on the right path. Kirsten Moore Towers looks beautiful in the midnight blue. Michael Marinero had some mistakes on the jumps in the free skate. It was really surprising. They were not perfect. I think he even did a single loop and you could just tell he was so upset with himself after the program. Kirsten Moore Towers was a great partner though and you know she didn't seem too upset by it. They were on the podium in Canada. That's a start for them. They're fighters, so I think they're going to really want to prove themselves, especially after the season they had last year. But winning a silver medal here 
is a start. I believe at last year's Skate Canada, they were third. So, you know, something they should be proud of. However, I will say they were able to win the silver medal here because the other Russians, Evgenia Trosvo and Vladimir Morozov, had a big mistake by aborting their lift, which is a big no-no in pair skating. Lifts are actually a big part of the technical score. So I think they lost about like nine to ten points on that one element because otherwise they were looking pretty decent also not perfect on the rest of their program so Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero did edge out the Russians that way but not only that it's just surprising that Evgenia and Vladimir didn't win this competition I think if everyone was clean Evgenia and uh, Vladimir would have the highest program component score and actually let me double check that on the protocols in the free skate Okay, so actually interesting. Boykova and Kozlovsky, their program component score for the free skate was 68.56. And then for the Canadians, it was 70. So they win in components because Evgenia and Vladimir's program component score was 69.50. So that's very interesting to see how that plays here. So kudos for the Canadians for winning the program component score of the free skates. That's actually, that's pretty big. Does it help that this was a domestic competition for them? Sure, but it should be a confidence boost for them to carry on to their next competition. Let's look at some of the mistakes in detail. Yeah, it looks like Evgeny and Vladimir botched uh, the side-by-side -side jumps too, so it wasn't just the lift. So they were totally not on at all. So unfortunate about that axle lift being aborted. Otherwise, I, I would have predicted them to win the competition. Oh yeah. Then we have Americans Alexa Skimeka Kinnearum and Chris Kinnearum. And I gotta say, American pairs did not look disastrous here at Skate Canada. They stood up, they stood up on their jumps. And I actually think Alexa and Chris have some good basic pair qualities to their skating. It would have been nice for them to land on the podium here, but you have to be technically perfect. And I said they stayed on their feet, but no. With the opening combination, uh, Chris did a triple toe, single toe. So that was a loss of points there. And then, yeah, the grade of execution scores on their lifts, they were not perfect. So they look like they're getting better though. Alexa suffered from some health issues in the past, so it looks like she's getting stronger. So good for them. We also have Canadians at fifth place, Lubov Ilushenka and Charlie Bilodeau, their first Grand Prix outing as a pair, and I thought they were not bad. I don't want to say I love them, I don't hate them. It's their first season together. I'm not sure I'm sold on the connection between the two yet. That might be something that just takes time because I think I thought I think I had the same opinion about Chris Moore Towers and Michael Marinero. They look great right now, but I wasn't saying that about them. Their first season together, but otherwise, I think it's always good to have more pair teams for Canada, especially with the recent retire retirements of Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford. Also, congratulations, Megan, on your newborn baby. And then I also wanted to mention my favorite American pair right now. Jessica Catalang and Brian Johnson, they look so regal on the ice. Just great basic pair skating skills. Very like North American style, which I love. Very kind of like romantic. Perfectly paired, perfectly matched couple. Great height, distance. They just need to work on their solo jumps. I met them uh, after the competition and I said, hey, you guys stood up on your jump elements you stayed on your feet that was good obviously they, it wasn't done too well on the rotations and step outs are not great it looks like both of them have to work on their jumps because in one competition it's brian missing them and another one it's jessica so but besides jumps they got it all it will just take consistency and also it's difficult to compete in competitions one week after the other they were at skate america last week but i think they had a step up here so kudos to them okay now time for the last discipline of the video the men's i mean yuzuru hanyu of japan two-time reigning olympic gold medalist wow i will say yuzuru hanyu is so good sometimes i forget what it's like 
to see him skate in person and it is a total different experience than watching him on the computer screen. I know I've said that about other skaters. It's the most true with Yuzu. It is something magical with his skating. Oh, the costumes are just so sparkly. It's like, it's like the overall Yuzu Ruhanyu effect when he performs. It's great. He won both segments of the competition. I don't think he was perfect you know, in his terms in either program, as in he had to save some of the jumps with the spread eagles and the choreography, but he was just uh, as energetic, as wonderful as ever. Wow, it's so amazing how cool, calm, and collected he can be while having a massive, loud crowd in the arena. I don't know how he doesn't get distracted, because I totally would be, but I love both of his programs. His jumps look good what was it i think the the big combination was oh yeah it was the quad toe euler triple flip that gained him the most points so much so 16.83 base value because it earned the bonus being in the second half of the program and that total element scored him 20.90 points that is crazy crazy amazing crazy high that's higher than nathan chen's you know quad let's triple toe combination it's wow program component marks a lot of 9.75s and 10s across the boards averaging out in the high nines well deserved wow that was just an amazing experience i think i said more in my vlog about seeing yuzu so i won't repeat any of it here but yeah i mean what can we say the two-time reigning olympic champion competed at skate canada oh but this is his first time winning Skate Canada, so it's like extra special. No Patrick Chan here, or really any other competition. He was on a league of his own. And speaking of which, my favorite male skater, Nam Nguyen, had to skate right after him in the free skate, which must have been so difficult to do, but he did the right thing with keeping the engagement of the audience, keeping the their energy loud and up for him he did just that his free skate was playful and upbeat and i just love when nam gets into the music and he becomes playful with the audience you'll notice moments where he's like pointing at someone and grabbing people in looking at the judges um but not only that he did so well he did two quads i think the only mistake was i think like a triple axle single toe something like that but no, kudos to Nam. And by the way, he did well in the short and long. Moved up a little bit because he was third in the short. But I, I say besides Yuzu Ruhanyu, Nam Nguyen also had an amazing moment. Maybe it's because he's my favorite skater of the free skate. I think right now it's looking like he could very well be Canada's leading man internationally. I think a lot of people would consider Keegan in that position before because he qualified for the Grand Prix final last season, although it was as an alternate still, he made it there and that's great. But Nam, I hope he qualifies for the final this season and Canada only has one spot for the men's discipline at the World Figure Skating Championships in Montreal. That's really unfortunate. I think Canada should send their best skater, their best competitor, and right now it looks like it could be Nam. So I hope the rest of the season is just as successful and playful and he has fun along the way. So I'm excited for him. In third place, we have KG. Let's see if I can pronounce his name correctly. KG Tanaka. I will say the standout program for me from KG is his short to hip hip chin chin. Like he really gets into it. It's so impressive to see. He's a lovely skater. The free skate, I do enjoy, just not as much as the short, but let's talk about some of his um, technical elements. He did a quad sal cow to open, triple axle, triple toe. Unfortunate about the quad sal cow single toe. I know Ithikana was telling me on Twitter, hey now, that he needed to add a competition, uh, a combination to not get a deduction because you can't repeat the quad. And the landing was not strong on that second quad sal cap. So he did what he could, but you know, it's interesting going from four rotations to one. It's especially interesting to watch live in person. And program component marks were in the solid mid-eights, which I think is 
fair. His program component marks are 85, which is a little lower than Nam at 86 in the free skate, which is interesting. I, I'd say that Keiji Tanaka has better overall skating skills, but Nam did work the audience really well. So performance for Nam was above Keiji and also um, what again, uh, domestic competitions. I know I'm saying that a lot. I promise I'll repeat it for other competitions too. It's, you know, it's something that exists, but yeah, interesting to note. And then, oh, we have Camden Pukin of the United States in fourth place position here. I'd say the standout for him was also that short program. He was second overall. He couldn't even believe it, but it was so good. Camden Pukin with consistent jumps, including a quad, makes him the total package lyrical skater among technical powers and he has such amazing control over his blade edge quality he's really fast and he pays attention to the music oh he just follows the choreography so well i'm repeating myself he's just so good i'm so proud of him this is his first year as a senior internationally so kudos to him for doing such a good job in the freescape you know it wasn't as perfect as the short because his quad toe was under rotated. Now it was great to see, you know, see him attempt it and land on his feet, but I had a feeling it was under even in person and yeah, the protocols reflect that. But 82 for program component marks, you know, that's not too far behind Keiji Tanaka at 85. But I imagine with consistent performances and more outings at international competitions, that score has got to go up. Triple flip, I also see, was given a negative grade of execution. Yeah, because that landing was not good and there was an unclear edge. But also his spins, Camden Pukin, dark horse for the U.S. Nationals medals podium, which would be hard to do because there's Jason and then Nathan and Vincent. But Camden can get up there. But also my favorite is Tomoki. Ooh, U.S. Nationals is going to be interesting. <laughs> Cannot wait. Let's see here. We have in fifth place, Dennis. Ooh. Not going to try to pronounce that last name because I would butcher it. That would be disrespectful. But the skater from Latvia, he was in fourth after the short program, and I thought that was done really well for him. Fortunately, the free skate did not go over very well. Just a lot of mistakes. But I really appreciated the short from him, Matteo Rizzo, the Italian skater who was uh, recently added, my friend Eleonora. I was so happy she got to root for an Italian skater. He's also lovely as well. I'm gonna bring it down to one of my favorite skaters from Malaysia, Julian ZGE. I was so happy he was added to the roster at Skate Canada International not too long ago. His short program was so delightful. I like that it was a new piece of music for him. It was a different style, a more lyrical piece, and I think that's good for him to take his time the program because sometimes he rushes his elements, but he stuck with the same technical that he always does, you know, the triple axle and then the let's toe combination, but oh, it was so good. I think the short program portrays his skating in a different, more positive way. The free skate was his playful crowd pleaser. Almost all the jump elements were on point except for the last few. He popped some, but at least there wasn't a fall, so no disruption in the flow of the program. But overall, it was great to see Julian ZGE of Malaysia. It's great to see South Asian countries represented on the Grand Prix. Uh, he needs to continue doing well, especially at the World Figure Skating Championship, so he can be assigned a Grand Prix right off the bat next season. So everyone, I made it. That's my recap. Sorry it's not as detailed, but it was such an amazing, amazing weekend. I hope you all enjoyed the competition as well, and I'll see you in my next recap. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.